A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked said among themselves, thinking not aright, let us beset the just one because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. He professes to have knowledge of God and styles himself a child of the Lord. To us, he is the censure of our thoughts. Merely to see him is a hardship for us because his life is not like that of others and different are his ways. He judges us debased. He holds aloof from our paths as from things impure. He calls blessed the destiny of the just and boasts that God is his father. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the son of God, he will defend him and deliver him from the hands of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put him to the test that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death for according to his own words, God will take care of him. These were their thoughts, but they erred, for their wickedness blinded them, and they knew not the hidden counsels of God. Neither did they count on a recompense of holiness, nor discern the innocent soul's reward. Verbum Domini. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all the Lord delivers them. He watches over all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. The Lord redeems the lives of the servants. No one incurs guilt who takes refuge in him. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Dominus Fabiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Ioannum. Gloria Jesus moved about within Galilee. He did not wish to travel to Judea because the Jews were trying to kill him. But the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles was near. But when his brothers had gone up to the feast, he himself also went up not openly, but as it were, in secret. Some of the inhabitants of Jerusalem said, Is he not the one they are trying to kill? And look, he is speaking openly, and they say nothing to him. Could the authorities have realized that he is the Christ? 
but we know where he is from. When the Christ comes, no one will know where he is from. So Jesus cried out in the temple area as he was teaching and said, You know me and also know where I am from. Yet I do not, did not come on my own, but the one who sent me, whom you do not know, is true. I know him because I am from him, and he sent me. So they tried to arrest him, but no one laid a hand upon him because his hour had not yet come. Verbum Domini. In John's gospel, the people, as well as the rulers, but the people object to Jesus' messianic claim on the grounds that we do not know where he is from. He then points beyond any place. So Nazareth, or even Bethlehem, they may say something of him, that he's of the house and family of David, that he's the bread of life, but his true origin, his real origin, is the Father. Jesus comes from him more totally than anyone sent by God before, and in a different way. I have not come of my own accord, he says. He who sent me is true. In him you do not know. In John 5, our Lord reveals a mystery of his inner life, that the Father has sent him to do a work, to speak his words. Jesus Christ is the word, the eternal word of the Father spoken into this world. And so he who sees Christ has seen the Father and knows him, as Jesus will say to Philip and the apostles in, in the Last Supper. So our Lord's authority, the saving power of his words and his deeds, his claim on our very life and heart all flow out of this mystery, of the mystery of the Trinity and the Incarnation. That this is not only on the objective ontological level, that is knowing where he is from, that he is the Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, but even subjectively, personally, the very experience of Jesus is charged with this glory. So all people saw Jesus, but not all came to believe in him. And many continued to question, even though they realized that this every sign pointed to that he was the Christ. So Christ himself, though, he lives and breathes entirely out of this relationship with the Father. He is sent by him. And being impelled by the Holy Spirit, that love between them, Jesus Christ takes this heart knowledge, his vision of the Father, his mission into the heart of the world to bring it, to bring all of us to the ability to see and to know the Father as he is. So John's Gospel reveals to us in a way that deep and dark and difficult part of humanity in each one of us where we do not accept the word of God, where we seek, as the first reading did, to put away those things which are good, but they're disruptive to the way of the world and the way of, of sin. So the Lord is God. You know, the Lord alone, we are not to have false gods before us, and that would include our own selfishness. Instead, we have the gift of his, the presence and the manifest expression of the Father's love in Christ and the sending of the Spirit. So all of us were born and we live in different places, but... It can be said, and may it be said, that we live from this heart's embrace of the Father, that we know him and have seen him 
in Christ and in the Spirit. And we do this, we know the Father, by coming to know Christ, by listening to his word, by following in his way, by prayer, by reading of the Holy Scripture, by entering into the sacraments, especially baptism and the Eucharist, and confirmation in the Spirit. So to, to recognize that great love of the Father, his desire for us, that we owe him all of ourselves, to love him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. But this love, just as the Son knew the love of the Father and loved the Father with everything he was, it impelled him and sent him to his brothers and sisters to love one another as, as he has loved us. And this is the great mission we have that is first comes from that love and that experience we have of God.